Hi, my name is Akel. In order to buy or sell, you have to have the money of the beast on your mind or in your hand. It's one of those words they don't translate correctly. It's a Greek word, and here is the unabridged Greek English lexicon by Liddell and Scott. And, uh, whoops. Oh gosh, wrong way. Here we go. You can see that the correct in context definition is the impress on the coin. But uh, I should have probably showed you that first. There's where what it says. You know, if these Christians would believe what Jesus wrote, you know, Jesus said you can't serve God or money. You'll either love the one or hate the other or hold to the one or despise the other. And he sent his disciples out without any money in their purses. But, but uh, you know, um, these Christians are... Just like a lot of people, you know, they just love money and these people are like suing me because they're trying to like steal these lots I've had for a long time as an investment. So if you go to my website, you can read about something that's causing me a lot of anxiety and money. But like um, the Kennedy assassination, I've talked about this before and I think I've even showed this on the last show. This latest skeptic has a front page cover story about the JFK assassination in here. And I'm kind of an expert on this, like I'm an expert on several other of these conspiracies that uh, they don't tell you about, like 9-11 and um, the gas chambers. But anyway, here's what they have is these three tramps I've been telling you about. And somebody drew a sketch of them, but they aren't very good. And these guys were arrested like around this part behind the grassy knoll where Kennedy was shot on Elm Street and there's a freight yard back here and the trains go through there but you can see there's not much I mean this they don't you know they don't tell you the truth these guys here this this is supposed to be uh, that person but um, it's actually the, this guy named Frank Sturgis who was a uh, CIA agent in, in Cuba. He's one of these three tramps they arrested out back of the grass, so you know. And then this one here, he looks like a Mexican, but he looks so much... I mean, this one is um, the E. Howard Hunt tramp. And um, this and Skeptic Magazine just does a real stupid tramps like us, they call the headline on here. But... Um, you know, it's like they can't, I don't know why this, you know, they're they're good on some things, but bad on the others. And here's this uh, book by um, E. Howard Hunt's son, St. John Hunt, and his dad confessed to being uh, involved in the assassination. And, and um, in this book, he, the author um, included this flyer I made a long time ago. And I, Jim Garrison, um, he was the star of that movie that Oliver Stone made, um, JFK. But, and then there's the three tramps that you can uh, let's see. If that's better. Get this in focus. Maybe you can. Well, you can go to my website and and read all this. But um, these two guys, Frank Sturgis and E. Howard Hunt, were like Watergate buddies. And they were also anti-Castro Cubans. And they had a good reason to kill Kennedy. And then right here I have a whole, you know, like the people on the Warren Commission. Gerald Ford was on the Warren Commission, and he later became president. And then they had this committee called the Rock of, well, it was, it was called the Commission on CAA Activities within the United States, and it was held in 1975, and Ronald Reagan served on that committee to cover up the um, assassination of JFK. And if you look at history, like everything kind of, some people say the big change was this, um, um, uh, the, well, uh, the World War II, you know, that that was probably the biggest change. Some people say the, the Federal Reserve is, and then taking us off the gold standard and and all that kind of like, allowed the printing presses to be uh, turned on and and uh, create all this funny money. And uh, there's, you know, in Goethe's Faust, the, the, the Mephistopheles creates um, 
all these paper money and and the emperor and treasurer are very pleased they have all this funny money so it's the devil that really brings money you know the um pluto and uh, plutocracy and is like the pluto is the god of the underworld and the dead and and gold comes out from the ground there are a lot of famous people like um shakespeare even wrote about in timothy of athens he talks about how gold is um such a bad thing you know it causes people to to do all kinds of evil there it is gold that it um it it does all those things and um and then uh, so uh, even this other thing by shakespeare is kind of taken out of context where you know they talk about killing all the lawyers but it's really um thing about um getting rid of money and um this um Muammar Gaddafi was another one who believed in eliminating money but uh and I put this on my um Facebook page about um how um uh, Hillary Clinton was like being videotaped on a show with uh, you know 60 minutes or something and she's like sitting in a chair and she's adjusting her jacket you know her like suit jacket or dark jacket and and uh she's kind of laughing and said yeah we came we saw and we killed him and she looks over to her friend over there somewhere and starts laughing a hideous laugh because they killed this guy Qaddafi who believed in eliminating money this i printed i made this flyer uh, at about the time that um Ronald Reagan bombed uh, in 1985 or something I wrote this but uh it's a very similar to what Friedrich Engels wrote about eliminating money it's like when you know mo- with modern machinery we would make money superfluous we would have an abundance and when you have an abundance there's no reason to have to divvy and hoard things it can everything can be given away for free and that's like what Bertrand Russell who um, believed in and i have all these quotes from famous people who believed in eliminating money i call it the gospel of eliminating money and um it's up on my website and, and i even had a little brochure if i can find it well collage i made out of uh, these quotations oh, i can't find it but so anyway like the their you know Libya under Qaddafi they had like five star hotels and everything was really nice but um you know we they're going their, their oil production is way down i just really wonder if these people are you know better off without Qaddafi it's like a big power grab there you know and they have all these tribes and things and Qaddafi held like three separate tribes in harmony you know as best they could and i guess they shared the wealth but some got more than others and so they're basically going to probably split that country up into three separate countries but uh, you know you, i heard a lot of things i don't it's very hard to tell if they're true or not but uh, you know like Qaddafi you know gave very good education to everybody and and you know a lot of socialist programs he had where rent was subsidized and things like that that's what i heard but but he believes in eliminating money and and um uh, he didn't um he didn't go along with the the banking system either he wanted to start coin, coining his own gold you know africa has a lot of gold so he wanted to unify these african countries like the united states of africa and they would have a a gold currency and i think you know he was going to start selling his barrels of oil for gold i don't know but he you know he he brought like water from the desert it was called the great man-made canal it's like one of the wonders of the modern world he built these like 50 foot diameter or um steel like like pipes and they welded them together maybe they weren't that big i think they were and and it was to bring water 
<laughs> all the way down to Tripoli. So anyway, we'll see. I don't know. You know, I've on the internet. I've one guy said he worked there, but he was a foreigner. You know, and so any foreigner in a country probably isn't going to like the person. I don't know, but um, I don't know how that guy feels now. He was like a friend of mine on one of these photography things, and like if you go to Flickr and look at the Libya uh, groups, you know it's kind of hard to tell what's really going on there. Uh, you know they've got some characters of of Gaddafi. You know people have graffitied on the wall and stuff like that, but. That could be just, I mean, I just wonder what these people really think. Maybe they're afraid to say that they really thought Gaddafi was better or something, and they can see the that these people that are fighting over there. It's just like in Syria. There was a good article in the paper today that finally they had some national organization say that these people are, the so-called rebels are, like, killing civilians and things like that, and... I don't think I brought that article with me uh, in today's um, paper about the Syrian rebels that are killing uh, a lot of people. Maybe it's on the other side of this. Nope, it isn't. But anyway, this rabbi died in Israel, and he was like the head of the Shah's party, and it, it's like ultra-Orthodox, um, you know, like, fanatical people that study the Torah all the time. Here's a, they ha, it was one of the biggest um, turnouts. You know, when this guy died in Israel, it's like something like one in ten people came, you know, and to the funeral when they carried his body and stuff. But uh, the thing is, you know, this New York Times article, it's pretty big, but they don't tell you that this man... He's supposed to be like a Talmudic scholar, but uh, he also says that the Goyim, which are non-Jews, are supposed to serve the the Jews. That's all they're they're put here on this earth. It was like, I think it was the Business Daily that that said that. that they tell you they told you that that was a big controversial thing. But it's even like in Israel, they don't really like these people too much because, you know, they're not um, educating their kids correctly. These people are so fanatic that they don't even teach their kids secular things, you know, that they're, they're teaching them. It's almost like those um, people that have to memorize the Koran. It's like um, really, uh, uh, you know, it's like when they... It's so unnecessary and such a waste of time. You know, that's the whole problem with these religions is they're irrational. And in like the book of John, in John 1.1, 1, 1, it says that um, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word is, is logos, which means logic. You know, I think the New Testament, for, you know, all it is, is like a really, you know, good book. You know, there's a lot of wisdom in there. You know, like I told you earlier how Jesus said that we need to uh, well, go without money. And they had these Aseans that were like contemporaries of Jesus. They had a cult back then, like the Pharisees and the Sadducees. They had the Aseans, and they lived out in the desert. And they also had large colonies all over where like you could go visit and they would treat you like a brother and feed you and let you sleep there and stuff. And they didn't carry any money because they had these colonies set up all over the areas there so they could um, not have to carry any money. But there, the, the word in John 1.1, 1, 1, it, it really means, um, it rarely means word. It means to reason, and uh, but it also is the same etymology for the word logic, reasoning. So, like, you know, if it's not logical, then it's of Satan or the devil, and the devil is a liar or a slanderer, like the etymology of the word devil means to slander. Well, let's see what else we got here. I didn't do this before, I don't think, but or maybe I did. 
but I'll do it over again. It's pretty interesting how these workers in uh, there's the average hours worked in selected countries, and you can see used to be uh, this is in the hundreds. <clears throat> so over the year annually, people in Japan used to work 22 to 2200 hours. But anyway, you get to the point down here, the Norwegians, you know, with modern machinery, they don't, they don't have to work as hard, you know, but in America, it's hardly changed at all. You know, these other countries, Japan, you know, they went from there down to about where we are, you know, they used to be like slaves up there. And how long ago was that? Back in the 70s. So, you know, these countries have really benefited from uh, greater production, you know, like it used to be that so many people were working on the farms, but now we've got all these people in the service industries that really aren't producing anything, you know, there's very few people that actually work, and, and, and most of them are, that have all the money are the ones who don't work, like these people on Wall Street, they... Um, gamble on, you know, and some of them are actually just playing games and with milliseconds and flipping, pro, you know, um, thousands of stocks just to make a few cents on each transaction, you know. But, you know, they do it so many times a day. So it's like these rich plutocrats, they game the system, you know, and they're, they're really reap, reaping rewards now. A lot of them are buying up all these uh, mortgaged homes that they jerked out from people and so now they're renting them to everybody and I don't know what the you know how many more renters there are than people that own their own homes <coughs> well speaking of homes they got they always have these articles in the New York Times about these really expensive on, in the Sunday New York Times Homes. This one is in the, on the most magnificent water estate, waterfront estate on the Connecticut Gold Coast. It's like built in 1925, but um, and they want 62 million dollars. Here's the front of it, and um, I'll zoom in a little bit better there. It's like really elegant. I'll show you the details. There's. That's the front door, you know, you let people in there, they'd come up in their cars. There's the back, kind of an English two-door. And I think this this is the coach house where the guest uh, quarters live, or else that's the guest house, I don't know. The swimming pool. <clears throat> and then this is the beach house. And you can see the, the beach house right there. I don't, I don't know where the main house is. Maybe that's it right there. And then here's the detail on on this house. But I wonder who lived in it. You know, now they're selling it for uh, $62 million. It's like, you know, you could build a real nice commune there and, and have a bunch of artists live in those buildings. But anyway, the, I saw this lecture on... on uh, world population they had a this is just a new york times article but the the un revert re, changed their forecast so that it's they're estimating that it's going to be uh 10 billion in uh 2100 but you know that's still a ways off but they're it's really you know part of the problem is I've been showing you that this is just recently, but over the long period, it's been like geometric progression of the world population, and that's what's causing global warming and and polluting the air. We're burning all this fossil fuel, and it's changing the climate. And you know, people are starting to realize that. It's going to change, and there's no stopping it. You know, it's like a train wreck ready to happen. So um, they've been having quite a lot of new articles about the uh, global warming. Here's a picture of, whoops, there we are, um, this uh, rainforest, you know, and they're saying that 
that uh, by 2047, the coldest years may be warmer than hottest in the past. Coldest years oh, it will be warmer than the hottest in the past. So there won't be any more cold cold winters anymore. It'll be, it's going to change. And uh, I don't know, they came out with a new rebuttal in today's paper that is kind of confirming it, though. They're not a rebuttal, but these are inconvenient uncertainties. It is uncertain. It could even be worse, you know, and they're saying that down here. But, um, yeah, it's, you know, and by 2047, and there's this great big tornado coming down, or not tornado, what do they call them, cyclone, coming into India. It's going to be much bigger than the one that hit New York. And um, it's going to, there's like a million people in the way. Well, let's see. I told you about that guy. Well, there's a... Well, let's talk about the oxygen. I put this up on my Facebook page. It was an article on the New York, in the New York Times that got me started on this. It's like uh, s- one of the mysteries of you know life on Earth is what caused the oxygen to to grow on Earth. And they had these microbes in the ocean, and the sun, and the chemistry caused them photosynthesis, and that released the gas, the o- oxygen in the air, and they had a problem with the volcanoes, which would act like a vacuum and just suck up all the oxygen. But So the earth cooled off, and, and then there was a surplus of oxygen, and that's how come you know, we're breathing here on this planet. And I kind of consider that a miracle. You know, it took like billions of years for this to happen. And, um, and that's one of the reasons I believe that it's very rare for um, life, intelligent life especially, to be on this planet. It's like um, so many contingencies. You have to have a sun, you have to have water and air and and, and the right distance uh, between the sun and, and all these other different things. And um, something to start this photosynthesis. I mean, who, who knew what what that started. It took so long for like single-celled animals to appear. Well, uh, so they're starting to talk about, you know, money. There's, they say this in the Bible too, like money will disappear. Jesus or something, where does it say that? When money becomes a thing of the past, yeah, Jesus said that, that you'll be received into the eternal home. But, you know, I see this this movie you know, this show on TV called um, Revolution, and I really believe that that's like what's really going to happen, you know. It's like the plutocrats, they realize that, you know, we're destroying this planet, you know, and unless we pull the plug out, so much ha- hell and chaos is going to happen, you know, with global warming. You know, we better just do this right now and get it over with, and with world population and all that stuff, so... They could just like pull a plug on the electricity. You know, they had the physicians for a social responsibility meeting down a couple of weeks ago here in Tucson, and they were trying, you know, to figure out what to do. And it's such of a situation where there's like chaos and and you know, like Katrina or something. You know, like if the electricity went out, you know, what would these physicians for social responsibility do? Would they, you know, it's like you know, you're, it's like, I mean, you know, the police during Katrina, they didn't, they went home, you know, to take care of their own family and everything. But so, you know, these physicians for social responsibility are trying to, you know, they have to coordinate. I mean, Tucson is like ground zero for, for chaos when, you know, the, when it really hits the fan. And I'm saying that like in this movie, Revolution, the there's the new plot is that, the United States government in exile, you know, I don't know, 13 years after the plug was pulled, they were hiding out down in Guantanamo, Cuba. And so they're starting to come back now to try to re-civilize society because there's various factions fighting, you know. And this whole area and the map is like, you know, Tucson and the Rocky Mountains and all that is like 
they call that wasteland, and then you got the Georgia Confederation, and so they've got all these different areas under. But the electricity went out by, you know, some kind of hocus pocus, and you know, some kind of animals or something in the air that can do miraculous things or something. You know, they they put a little crazy stuff in the in the, you know, I don't you know that that movie The Dome was supposed to be Earth you know, on a smaller scale, and um, I never saw, I didn't pay much attention to that, I don't, you know, I mean, I wish that Stephen King or somebody could write a story about, like, a messiah coming back, you know, the the Lord of the Rings and, and that other series, um, you know, um, a lot of them, you know, that, that they've come out with so far, they haven't really shown what really could exist on this planet if, you know, we didn't have this capitalism where there's so many people working at unnecessary things. You know, it's like some countries like Denmark and and Norway and places like that, you can see, you know, they've designed the cities much better. It's the way things are designed, you know, on the grid. And, you know, it should be more of a circle and more of a community. And that's part of the problem with the United States is, you know, like people in Europe have lived, and especially like Italy and places like that, they've lived there for hundreds of years, you know, the same family in the same house and all that. But, you know, in America, there's so much social mobility and all that that there's really no community. But like Tucson is like ground zero, you know, like if the electricity stopped coming, you know, you wouldn't have your air conditioner. I know, like, our air conditioner went out for, like, three hours, uh, you know, when it was, like, 103 out, you know, and I had to keep going outside to hose myself down. But if there was no water available, you know, how would you cool off, you know, and how long could you tolerate that, you know? And, um, you know, where are you going to get the water from? How are you going to feed all those people, get water, you know, like if the electricity went out. So, you know, like the Pacific Northwest, they have hydroelectric power, and you can't really make that go out, you know. But like in this movie, they had these little animals in the sky or something, and they prevented the um, electricity from running. But, you know, I don't, they don't really, they show that, you know. And um, I think the Georgia Confederation had, coal burning things i mean i don't know why they couldn't do that at uh so like um you know the pacific northwest i was telling you you they have a lot of hydroelectric power to survive when like if there's i think people up there are more conscious of the environment you know i went up there on vacation last summer and i just had a good feeling about oregon i i really just like the the greenness of it. I don't know what spending the winter there would be like. That might be pretty hard, you know, but uh, they have that big fertile valley there. And uh, I think that there's better contingency plans for something like this happening. And, uh, you know, it just can't really go on like this. It's, you know, so ridiculous. I mean, people out of work and, you know, it's like this funny money stuff and, Right now it's October 11th and we're having this debt battle, you know, and I don't know if you've tried to log in for um, this health care thing. It's like I've been trying to get just to see what it is, you know, but it's you've really got to figure out what your income is. And, and uh, you know, for most of the people out there, you just look at your adjusted gross income and, and that's basically how much you earn. But uh, for me... It's going to have to be a lot different, and they're going to probably have to call me in and or look at it more closely or something. It'll take a long time, I can tell, because of the deductions and stuff. But you can't even log in. You know, it's like all jammed up. But, like, if this, you know, Obamacare was so good, then why do they have to fine you for it? You know, they should, shouldn't should fine you um, if this was such a good thing. And, you know, I mean, the reason you don't have it is because you can't afford it, you know, it's, they call it the Affordable Care Act, but, like, I don't think it's going to be affordable. You know, one of my friends is paying $500 a month for, for like, a government health care policy, 
and you know it's probably a premium policy but 500 a month 5000 a year i mean you know if you're making 20000 you know that's a quarter of your income if you're making 20000 a year or you know um whatever you know you got to get a they're going to subsidize it probably maybe i don't know but you can't log in to find out and, but still i mean what well, is affordable i mean she's if my friend you know, I mean, but if you're 23 and, you know, your parents are healthy and your genetics are good, there shouldn't be much to worry about. <clears throat> anyway, I don't see any phone calls here. I haven't put the phone numbers up. Let me just put them up for a little while. <clears throat> they have a thing. They busted these rabbis in uh, New York. They were, uh, here it is, they were accused of kidnapping husbands. Because in the Jew, this Orthodox Jews that I was telling you about, if they don't uh, get this thing f- from the husband, they can't divorce. So this rabbi would kill, k- kidnap the husbands and threaten to beat them up if they didn't give their wives uh, a notice telling them that they can get divorced. And uh, so they arrested them and uh, for extorting money and beating people up to to get these divorces. That's the problem with these religions today is that they're not rational, you know. It's, uh, I was trying to show you earlier that, you know, the Logos, in John 1.1, 1, 1, the word is, it means to, um, it's to mean logical, and if it's not logical, you know, it's got to be like, it's of the devil, and, you know, it's logical that machinery should help us and make less work for us, and there shouldn't be all this unhealthy food out there. And I think alcohol is a pretty bad thing. But, um, you know, it shouldn't. we shouldn't have to worry about all this stuff. It's like all this anxiety. So many people are taking, like, anxiety medicine. And, uh, and then they've, um, it's one of the biggest industries is in the medical field is, you know, like people, and it's just like if they pulled the plug, you know, all these diabetics would die and uh, and all this other stuff would happen. And so, like, um, you know, it's like um, I heard that they have a bill. Somebody was introducing a bill that, you know, to deal with. They've got to have a study, a federal study to figure out. This is just recently. Somebody on Facebook posted this, that they're going to try to pass a bill to uh, examine what to do in case something like th- that happens, like if the plug gets pulled and all these people die, how are you going to bury them? And how, you know, so, I mean, you, you'd have to leave the cities or something maybe because, you know, there'd be cholera or, you know, if the water gets polluted and you can't drink it because of all these dead bodies or something, I don't know. I'm not really a scientist, but there's uh, so many problems in the world and you don't, you know, hear much talk about it. But, uh, you know, we're going to have a, a new Federal Reserve Chairman and, I just um, don't have much faith in this funny money thing. They had a pretty interesting chart here that showed, um, you know, they they can figure this all out and and make it so that it stays around the center here. But like during the Great Depression, this is unemployment over here. Unemployment, twenty, about twenty three percent. Away over here, you get to twenty five percent, and then deflation, they had deflation, and it went way down there, well, it started down there, it came around, and then it came back up, and it got back inside there, and uh, let's see where we are now, we're down here, we've got a little deflation, and a high unemployment, and uh, well, it's starting to come back, but now it's going down more deflation, and uh, so they play around with this money and they make people slaves and it's not necessary if there's an abundance. You can give it to all the way for free. And like, you know, we've got this salmonella poisoning from this chicken that they put out there. It, um, and they put coupons on there to try to get it, people to buy it, you know. And you know, I don't think it's, you know, you see all these chickens in there. But like there'd be plenty of food if we stopped... Um, if we stop doing um, feeding cows and stuff, well, let's see. What we got a call here. Hello. Hello. 
Maddie hung up. But I could hear myself in the background. Well, call back, and uh, I don't have much more to talk about here. I've got one more thing. That goes with the old story. That was a front-page story about the, the rabbis. Or no, wait a minute. No, it wasn't. Let's see, that was continued from page A18. So the only other thing I have is like this... Uh, Yoko Ono always likes to run these big front page ads, or not front page, but full page ads in the New York Times. And I don't know, it's kind of a silly poem. But she's got this picture that John Lennon wrote, or drew, and uh, the chests are cat cry, our hearts are dry. Yeah, this world, we need to stop the wars, you know, that's the problem in the world today. And it's like a fact that all wars are caused for the sake of getting money. It's like, you know, um, why don't, you know, if we're really concerned about welfare of people and stuff like that, you know, we never went into Rwanda when all that stuff was happening. And, you know, we shouldn't be in Syria. I was telling you before that that the, the Syrian rebels are, are just creating a butchery. It's like in Iraq, after we left, they had all this... Um, bad, um, you know, they the plumbing went out and and things like that, and the sewers backed up, and they've had car bombings and bombings here and there. These factions are fighting, and it's this religion stuff, you know, it's the Shiites and the Sunnis, and you get this crazy, irrational religion. It's not um, really a unifying thing. The way that I think we should be unified would be, like I was saying earlier, about how unique this planet is. You know, it's amazing that we have oxygen here. And like in some places in China, they're polluting so badly that they almost have to wear face masks, you know. And same with Japan. You know, one of my professors in college would say that Japan is like a cigar and it's just, you know, burning and burning. They don't really have any natural resources there. So, you know, like um, they have to import these things and... uh, and like uh, I don't know if the you know if the if it hit the fan, you know Cuba is a pretty self sufficient place, you know they've uh, you know they've had that embargo down there, and if you like compare Cuba to like Puerto Rico, you know Puerto Rico is kind of like the fifty first state of the United States. They have food stamps down there, and there was a story in the New York Times. I didn't cut it out, but it was showing how. Um, They've got a very, very bad debt problem. It's like it's probably about as bad as Detroit's or something. It was pretty bad. So they can't print up their own money down there. They use the dollar. And so they're like wondering what to do, you know. And so I just wonder, you know, wonder myself. And, uh, you know, it's like why have, why did the United States government not allow people to go down to Cuba for such a long time, you know, or, or, I would think that it would be so that we couldn't go down there and see how good it was, you know. And, and the whole reason that it's not good is because we have this embargo against them, and and you know they're so close we could do free trade and stuff. But they've taken pretty good care of themselves down there, and that's what like if the if it got really bad around here, you know, you could like go to a place like that and or Oregon or something. But like in that movie I was telling you, the, the, the USA allegedly went to Guantanamo Bay and they hid out. And it's like the plutocrats here in the United States, they've got jets and yachts and places to go. You know, they've got the thousand acre ranches or they can fly to New Zealand or they can sail there or they can, you know, like that guy John Travolta, he's got a big 747 and you can imagine that he has a plan to evacuate, you know, like Los Angeles. It'd be one of the worst places to be if, if the, you know, if it hit the fan, because, uh, you know, they're totally dependent on, uh, on pumped in water. You know, they've got huge canals and stuff. Let's see who this guy is. Hello, you're on the air. Yeah, uh, Raquel, you, you're there. Yes. Hi. Well, okay. You sound real soft. Oh, good. Okay. I think you guys got that phone problem again. Well, you're sound, you're sounding pretty good over here. What's up? Oh, hey, are you going to go see um, Parkland? 
when no, it comes you, out. Well, I'm glad you brought that up. You know, I've I know I know the movie's based on Bugalosi. I've read about it. You know, and Bugalosi is a big liar. Mm -hmm. he, he's wrong about this. I was showing you the pictures of the three tramps there, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, the only reason you know what we need to do is find a forensic anthropologist to compare the pictures of E. Howard Hunt and the pictures of those tramps, mm -hmm. you know, because that's what they did in the House Select Committee on Assassinations in 1978. They got this guy, Dr. Clyde Snow, mm -hmm. to investigate, um, you know, with calipers and things. And he, yeah, he came, he's, yeah, he lied about it. And, cause well, he, yeah, but he's also getting up there in age, Exactly, too. yeah, yeah, right. So, uh, yeah. you know, but that's what we need to do, you know, if... if um, you know, I think Peter Dale Scott or somebody or somebody knows somebody they can get to re-examine those. And, and yeah, then I guess the, I guess they got involvement of of a uh, uh, the the guy who did the eight millimeter. What is that now? Uh, Wolgoski, the guy who did the eight millimeter. I'm not familiar with that. With what? the eight millimeter recording. Of, of Kennedy getting shot? Oh, that. Oh, it was a Pruder, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Sabruder, yeah, 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 I'm sorry. Yeah. I thought he was Polish or something, but Sabruder, uh -huh. that could be closer, I guess. Yeah, he could be a Polish Jew. I yeah. Yeah. Well. But they were saying that might mm -hmm. be that film was altered, too, by the time. Oh, yeah, could. right, yeah. They switched frames around or something, you know. And you can see in there, you know, Kennedy going back and he clutches his throat. And, yeah. You know, the Parkland Hospital, I mean, there's actually doctors that have have come out. I mean, they've written books on this. I'm not, you know, I'm not an expert on that subject. Yeah. But, but you know, they they show the guy pointing to his head. You know, the press secretary said, "Yeah, Kennedy." The, he was pointing to his head, showing that's where the bullet went in. You know, he got yeah. hit in the front. You know, <clears throat> and uh, of course, Steve Harry Oswald was from behind. So, you know, yeah. if you know, I mean, why was you know? So you, this is a big cover up, and you can see how things have changed. Yeah. You know, you ever been? You've been to Dallas? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, I'd like, not really, though, but, you know, I'd like to see this grassy knoll, I'd like to see the railroad tower, you know, where Bowers was. That's all was. gone. The railroad okay. tower? Yeah, everything is gone in the back. It's a big parking lot now. Oh, there's no railroad right train? It's oh, all yeah. taken out. They, yeah. uh, some, I, evidently, somebody in Texas bought the land oh, for yeah. the, a, a uh, business office complex mm -hmm. up, and they used yeah. that backside. Yeah. Or a parking lot. I always but wonder. The, but because mm -hmm. there's there's the fence line is still there, oh. or it was when I was there. What was it? What kind of line was it? It was just the fence. Oh, the fence. And, oh, and it was kind of spooky because oh. you could see where people wrote stuff on it about Kennedy. Yeah. Well, and, what about that bridge going over there? This. The, well, yeah, that's still there. Uh huh. Because that's a concrete bridge. But did the, where did the train tracks go? Did they must have torn that bridge down where the train ran over it, huh? No, uh, no, it was still there. Well, they had train tracks on the bridge. Well, yeah, but I mean, they oh. didn't go nowhere. I mean, oh. it's just. Well, where do you think those trains went? I mean, like it was a north-south route. Did they? Bend well, it? it's probably was, was a switching track. Probably. Yeah. Who yeah. knows? Yeah, but anyway, it was a switching those, those get, tramps put them into, those, into town and out. Yeah, they almost got away on that boxcar, and if it wasn't for that guy, it wasn't a boxcar. It was a gondola, but. If it wasn't for that guy Lee Bowers in that radio tower holding those trains off, they never would have found those tramps. Yeah, well, you know, who knows? It's been so long, everything is... I don't think... Yeah. It seems like every seven or eight years, might be uh, nine years, somebody comes out with the movie about Kennedy yeah, and what well, happened that yeah. day. Well, this is the 50th anniversary coming up, November yeah, 22nd. Yeah, that's what I heard that, you Yeah. Know. So, so well, that guy um, um, Oliver Stone made a pretty good one, that JFK movie, and he shows the tramps coming through there. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, I when I found out he was making that movie, I sent him a copy of this newspaper I wrote back mm -hmm. in 1985. Mm -hmm. And uh, and you know, I've got the pictures and everything of the tramps in there. Mm -hmm. And and so I'm glad he. Uh, put them in, you know, because it yeah. really adds credibility. That's how I can tell right away if the guy knows what he's talking about. Or, or You ever see the movie called Executive Action? No, I've heard about it, though. Yeah, it's, it's it was one of the first films what came out about the Kennedys. Oh. And it's about uh, basically how uh, it was more than, it was more with the big money who was involved with oh. it than, yeah. than him. Well, you know, 
Mm. Nobody, nobody has. Uh, there's still a lot of things that are, are classified. You know, 50 years after they're, they should re should release them. But you know, it's like it's it's you know. I mean, if, I wish that like here's my ideas. We get a bunch of famous people. Like you know, maybe even somebody could come out and admit like George Bush Senior probably knows who did it, right? And I think mm. I think they even have pictures of him there. You know, I'm not sure, but if it's him or not but you know he was head of the CIA he probably you know if we could get like a bunch of people to say yeah you know we did all this and this is a lie and we just have to eliminate money but I don't think it's going to happen you know no, it, but, it, it's, it's, it's like it's, it's going past too far uh -huh. and, and being really honest with you with the government like it is uh -huh. if it was a conspiracy if, if it was multiple shooters yeah, they probably were. They were probably were all dead by the end of that day. No, no, uh, -uh. E. Howard Hunt and Frank Sturgis were there, and I think this third guy. I never got, you know, I never did. Some people, I don't have the book with me though, but you know, he was definitely, you know, the third tramp. There was three tramps. Yeah. Uh, but like he was probably a marksman, you know, and and what mm -hmm. they did, you know, they had a rifle and they just threw it in the. I think Bauer said he saw them throw something in a in the trunk of a car or something, you know. Yeah. And they and so they could easily have gotten rid of the weapon and then got onto the gondola car and and gotten mm -hmm. out of there, but but yeah, they, but I think if it was something like that, they were probably pretty much eliminated. To, to something that important, that big. You and, lose, well, they could I have eliminated that gunman. Uh, he could have been gone. You don't want to leave nobody around for saying yeah. anything. Yeah, well, a lot of the witnesses got killed, you know. It was a very miraculous, I mean, you know, I think I have that in my story here about, yeah, 18 key witnesses mysteriously died in three years. Well, it was, it was total, what, about 56 or 57 of them? Yeah, Within, yeah. like, 10 years of the, of the assassination? Yeah, and, of course, you know, Ruby... Uh, got rid of Oswald, so Oswald wouldn't talk. Yeah. And Oswald always said that he was a patsy. But you know, like I was saying earlier, you know, Gerald Ford was on the Warren Commission, and 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 Ronald Reagan was on the mm -hmm. the um, CIA the uh, the Rockefeller Commission on CIA activities in the United States. But, yeah, well, G Gerald Ford is the last one surviving the Warren Commission. So oh, is he still alive? <laughs> I think so but yeah. i think you know it's a deal where uh -huh. if they're going to release any information yeah it's going to be released after a lot of people oh really i died see yeah that makes a good point yeah because there yeah. will be a, a lot of mad people i mean but you know when i first found out about it you know it, it like really hurt my heart i mean i found out about it maybe 25 years ago yeah. And you know, I just couldn't believe it. You know that our, we had a coup d'état in America. You know. Well, it's not like the first time. I mean, you know, there was, you know, you, um, you know, you had to look at like, you know, General Dynamics was going broke. Oh yeah. In that, in during that years. Yeah, yeah. They yeah. were literally, you know, ways to close the doors, and all of a sudden. They were getting government contracts left and right. Oh yeah, for, for the Vietnam and War and all that. Yeah, right. So it's yeah. well, it well was, whoever yeah. I mean, if it was a conspiracy against him, uh -huh. it was so far up in the up in the in the, in the power structure. Well, that, yeah, uh, LBJ was involved. He knew about it, and well, and I think I think was he a, was my pie was briefed later. It was a coup d'état. Yeah. Oh yeah, it was. Yeah. It was never meant to get out of that city. Yeah. Yeah, and it never, and the whole country has, like, gotten really screwed up since then, you know. It's like, mm -hmm. and it's, well, same with World War Two. you know. I think that, you know, if Hitler had his way over there, we wouldn't have this problem with all the Muslims, and we wouldn't have had this problem with Israel and the USS Liberty and all that. But anyway, I've only got a minute left, so I'm going to oh, have to say okay, goodbye. I'll let you go Thanks for calling. I'll just talk good, to you later. Yeah, bye. Thanks, bye-bye. It's good to have, like, an intelligent conversation about the Kennedy assassination. A lot of people... You know, I, I was like maybe, well, I don't want to tell you how old I was at the time, but I remember in school the teacher um, took us out in the hall and we would watch TV and she was like crying. and So everybody remembers where they were. Same like with this 9-11 thing, and, and that was a big fraud. Like those buildings just were pulverized by explosions. And so uh, that was used to get us involved in like these stupid Iraq and uh, 
Iraq wars and Afghanistan wars and all the heroin in Afghanistan. Anyway, God bless. My name is Raquel. No order to buy or sell. You have to have the money of the beast on your mind or in your hand. Bye.